be joined uh, via Zoom, of course, with Roshni Ramsing, who is Acting Entomologist of the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. We're going to be speaking about the giant African snail. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for having us on your program. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we look forward to the information that's about to be disseminated here. So uh, one of the, well, so-called pests is the African giant, the giant African snail. Tell us why it's so destructive. Okay, well, the giant African snail, it isn't a so-called pest. It's a genuine pest. Right. And one of the reasons it's so destructive is it's invasive. So that means it's not a native of Trinidad, so we have no natural enemies for it. And this pest can consume more than 500 different species. It reproduces, a single snail can produce up to 1,200 eggs a year, and it can live for nine years. So um, it can very quickly overwhelm a situation. So uh, describe to us what the giant African snail looks like. Okay, the giant African snail is what you'd call a longitudinal snail. That's it. When you look at it, it's more long than it's wide. It has light and dark stripes running in one direction from the tip of the shell to the base. And at the tip, you have many whorls. That's the turning on the shells. The adult has between seven and nine. And it can grow up to eight inches in length, but when it's now hatched, it's about the size of your fingernail. Now, uh, you mentioned earlier that the species is very invasive. Uh, where are some of the places that we may find it? In Trinidad? Yes. Uh, currently, it's in every county. Uh, up oh. to last month, it was not in County St. Patrick, but we've gotten a report that they have found it, they have confirmed its presence there. It tends to follow the human development. So you find it spreading along the east-west corridor, then along that southern belt from Port of Spain to San Fernando, and now it's spread throughout Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Trinidad, sorry, not Tobago. Wow, and uh, what are some of the other dangers posed by this invasive species? Well, it will affect our agriculture, and if our farmers are not being able to plant food, it's just going to affect everybody who eats, which is all of us. And one of the things with giant African snail, it has been associated with something called eosinophilic meningitis. Oh. The, yeah, the snail in urban areas, it lives in association with rats. Rats are the vectors for eosinophilic meningitis. So the snail and the rat, they have a, um, a relationship, as it were, where the lungworm is concerned. And if you handle a snail or you inadvertently consume a snail that contains the lungworm, you can get it. Now, in humans, the lungworm cannot complete, complete its life cycle. When it gets into you, it can move around until it eventually gets to your brain and you can come down with something called eosinic, eosinophilic meningitis. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we recommend to people don't handle it with your bare hands. So if we're not supposed to handle it with our bare hands, what are the safe ways in which we can handle it to get rid of them? Right. So one of the things we recommend, waterproof gloves. If you don't have waterproof gloves, you can use a plastic bag, you can use a shovel, anything other than holding the snail. And remember when we say bare skin, we don't only mean bare skin on your hands, your foot, any part of your body that's going to come into contact with the snail, make sure it's covered, right? Okay. When you, so right, so you look in your yard and you see some giant African snail, you pick them up with a covered hand, of course. Right. And as a householder, we recommend the best way to control it is using bleach and water or salt and water two cups of bleach or two cups of salt, a gallon of water in a bucket, put the snails in, cover it, and leave it for 24 hours. They will die. Wow. Uh, you mentioned as well, uh, if someone were to accidentally ingest uh, the snail, it could be detrimental to them um, also. Um, you know, uh, on French menus, you would see something called escargot, which I'm sure you're familiar with, um, where people yes. actually eat the snails. Uh, is the African, the giant African snail on that list of edible snails? 
It is in other parts of the world, but the problem in Trinidad and Tobago, it's because it's found associated with the rats, the risk of the rat lungworm, Ministry of Health has told us repeatedly, it's too great. So it's not something we would recommend you eat at all, at all, at all. Right. All right. So, right, so. Uh, for those uh, Epicureans there, uh, do not try to eat the giant African do snail. Not. <laughs> because, right. uh, yeah, it may be detrimental to your health. And uh, you, so after you place the snails in the salted water or the bleach water and they die, how do you get rid of the, of the dead snail? Right. Well, you would take them out of the water. One of the things to look for are eggs, because when the snails are dying as a survival technique, they will expel any eggs they have. Okay. Right. So when you drain off the water, collect the snails, collect the eggs. You can put the dead snails and eggs in a plastic bag and throw it in the garbage. You can bury it in your yard. Now it will smell, it would have a strong smell when it's decaying. So bury right. it fairly deeply. And if you live in an area where you can, a burning barrel, a barrel with some wood, and you can burn the dead snails. Make sure you get permission from fire department before you burn anything. And what do I do if I'm controlling the snails on my property, but my neighbor isn't doing anything at all? Oh, dear. Try to encourage your neighbor, right? Um, that is one of the big problems we're having, not just with giant African snail, with nearly everything else, right? Unless everybody tries to do their part, we are not going to get, a whole, get this problem under control, right? So I really would encourage everybody if everybody takes care of just their property, we will get this problem under control. And if you find the snails in your yard, don't pick them up and throw them by your neighbor. Please, <laughs> you, yes, you drown them by you, right? right? And throw them away, right? Uh, w when you mentioned the eggs, uh, do the eggs not die in the salted water, the bleach water as well? Do you they have would. to dispose of them they, separately? No. They would die in the salted water once they remain there for 24 hours okay. with the dying snails. Yeah, they will be dead, right. right? But dispose of them as well. If, for instance, I live next to a vacant lot and the snails are coming into my property from the vacant lot, what do I do? Well, that is uh, quite an interesting question. And depending on the size of the vacant lot, one of the things you can do is we have something called metaldehyde beet or iron phosphate beet. So around the perimeter of your property adjoining the empty lot, you can put a ring of this beet, a line, and that will, the snails will not, when they come to that line, it will control them, right? Um, try to find out who the owner is, encourage them to control it and things like that. Well, that answers right? my um, next question, how to giant African snail proof my property. Uh, and as you said, could you mention the name of that um, beet okay, again? Okay, so there are, yeah, there are two beets. There's the metaldehyde beet and there's iron phosphate. If you have children and pets, we would recommend you use the iron phosphate beet. It's, um, it's better, it's safer around children and pets. All right. Well, with that one, I want to thank you so much, Roshni Ram Singh, Acting Entomologist, Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, for joining us this morning and giving us this very, very important information. So just to un you, underline Tom. the main points again, uh, don't eat it. Uh, cover your hands if you do have to handle the snail to get rid of it. You can place it in a bucket with uh, heavily salted water or bleach water. Leave it for 24 hours. That would kill the pests as well. And, uh, you know, you, to dispose of them, you could either bury them or burn them. And of course, if you need to bring them, get uh, permission from the fire department. With that, we are now at the top of the hour, so we're going to take a break. And we're going to come back with the second half of the show after the news.